two. <laughs> well, welcome well, well. to worship this night. It's a service of night prayer for the winter solstice, but also a time for us to remember that huh? this isn't always an easy time for us as we have others celebrate around us. Uh, often we carry uh, struggles of our own at this time. Uh, Amen. It really does feel like a burden to do that. And so we're, we're thankful for this opportunity to gather. As a way of introduction, the winter solstice is the longest night, and that was last night, and the beginning of winter in the Northern Hemisphere. In a few days, many will gather to celebrate the nativity of our Lord, the arrival of Jesus Christ, God in human form. December 25th is celebrated as Christ's Mass because it had been incorrectly identified as the winter solstice. What the early Christians intended for this feast was not a birthday party for baby Jesus, but rather a feast of proclamation. God arrives by the way of darkness. Christians wanted to tell the world that God, the maker of the cosmos, chose to lovingly draw near to our broken world by way of a human birth on the longest night of the year. God's love for us goes deep and does not fade or change with the seasons. It is richer and more plentiful than the darkness of night, blazing brighter than the noonday sun of late June. For many, the lack of daylight intensifies our suffering. The weight of depression grows heavier when light is scarce. We get stressed out when our calendars fill with extra social obligations. We fear interactions with family members that have been difficult in the past. What an opportunity then to share that the message of Christmas is specifically sent for those in pain and in suffering. It is not that all is merry and bright. Rather, it is the abiding truth that God seeks to be with us even when we are blue. While it is true that our pre-industrial forebears had legitimate reasons to be afraid of the dark, it is also true that we repeat racist binaries that have led to the violent deaths of people of color when Christians associate darkness with pain and lightness with healing. A night like this and a feast like Christmas are fruitful encounters with healing darkness. God with us is here to guide us into paths of love and practices of justice.
the light of our Lord Jesus Christ, the warmth of God, and the hope of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Creator of the stars of night, bless the long hours of this night with the warmth of your presence. Come to all who suffer in any way. Grant rest to the weary, freedom to those who are burdened, and bright hope to those who despair. Strengthen us as we await your coming again. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. How small our span of life, O oh God, our years from birth till death. A single beat within the heart, the catching of a breath. A drop within the ocean's deep, a grain upon the shore. A flash of light before we sleep to see the sun no more. We thank you, God, for kindling faith that lights our transient years, illumining our pilgrimage through mists of doubt and fears. For hope that sees a life beyond the swiftly passing days, for love both human and divine that lifts our hearts to praise. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you called light into being, and you set lights in the sky to govern night and day. In a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, you led your people into freedom. Enlighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. May your word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. For you are merciful and you love your whole creation. And with all your creatures, we give you glory. Through your son, Jesus Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And now for Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and foes, they shall stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise up against me, yet I will be confident. One thing I asked of the Lord, that will, that will I seek after, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will set me high on a rock. 
Now my head is lifted up above my enemies all around me. And I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. Come, my heart says, seek his face. Your face, Lord, do I seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You who have been my help, do not cast me off. Do not forsake me, O God of my salvation. If my mother and father forsake me, the Lord will take me up. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Do not give me up to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and they are breathing out violence. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong, and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. From Isaiah. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to hear that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, a voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, 
and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother's sheep. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come, I Just as I am, though tossed about with many a conflict, many a doubt, fightings and fears within, without the Lamb of God I come, I Just as I am, thou wilt receive, wilt welcome, pardon, cleanse, relieve, because thy promise, thy faithful Lamb of God, I come, I Just as I am, thy love unknown has broken every barrier down. Now to be thine, ye thine alone, O Lamb of God, I come. I Our next reading comes from the 22nd chapter of Revelation. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life. I can't hear you, Susan, but can, it, can others hear her? Okay, go ahead. How about now? Can you hear me now? Yes. Perfect. Sorry about that. Must be my headphones. A reading from the 22nd chapter of Revelation. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and the lamb through the middle of the street of the city. On either side of the river is the tree of life with its 12 kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month. 
and the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Nothing accursed will be found there anymore, but the throne of God and of the lamb will be in it and his servants will worship him. They will see his face and his name will be on their foreheads and there will be no more night. They need no light nor lamp nor sun for the Lord God will be their light and they will reign forever and ever. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into, the be into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. As I come to this night, uh, I come uh, struggling, just like everybody else. Um, I'm tired, sometimes grumpy. Um, my depression this year is a little harder to struggle with. Um, I think this uh, lack of light is affecting me more than in the past. Um, memories burden me of those who aren't with us 
to celebrate this season. And so in the midst of this, I was struck by the line from Isaiah, um, lift up your heads. I want to find it and read it specifically. Oh, where is it now? I highlighted it. <laughs> um, anyway, we'll lift up our heads, right? Lift up your heads above the turmoil. Sort of reminds me of someone in the in a lake uh, treading water and just keeping their head up. That's kind of the image I have. But in the midst of that, there's a repeated refrain in all these readings that are, and it's also a refrain repeated all through scripture, and that is the promise of God. That God's word will stand forever, even if everything else fades away. We hang on to this hope that indeed God is with us. As we move through this pandemic and look at the start of a third year of it, um, you know, it's hard to find hope. Um, when we watch our uh, ecology efforts fail and we have tornadoes unprecedented, uh, when we have um, glaciers that have lasted for eons disappear. It's hard to have hope. It's hard to keep our heads up. Uh, when we have people who would rather destroy our country than allow others to have other ideas, it's hard to have hope. It's hard to hang on. And that's just the stuff outside of ourselves. And then we can mention our own struggles, our own personal hardships, and, and the reality of living in, in the midst of this with the burdens we carry. I've always hated the line, God will never give you more than you can handle. I think that's a crock. What I do know God promises is that when we're in the midst of it, God will be there to help us with our burdens. And I find that to be a much more helpful encouragement, if you will. But it's really good news that Jesus sees you and is with you and struggles with you. Remember, this is the Jesus that was spat upon that was beaten. This was a Jesus that was born as a very fragile baby in the midst of a very fragile time. This Jesus is pretty aware of our struggles and our pains. But yet Jesus chose the way of love, the way of hope, the way of healing, and more importantly, the way of peace. So in this dark time, I'm going to think of the darkness as a good heavy blanket <laughs> where I can kind of hide for a little while, gain my strength, maybe cry, hang out with God for a while, and snuggle up in that blanket of darkness knowing that the light is always going to be there to show me the way. Amen.
We pray now for the world, for God's creation, and more importantly, for all people who are in need, trusting that God does indeed hear our prayers. On this night, I light a candle for the world, that it will know peace someday soon, when all war will cease, all indemnity will be wiped away, when we will only see each other as siblings embracing this wonderful and beautiful creation. I light a candle for the church and pray that it discovers new ways of bringing the good news to all people. That this good news will be a word that doesn't separate and cause pain, but indeed brings life. I light a candle for this congregation, that God will continue to bless it and strengthen it and lead it in the ways of Christ. I light a candle for Linda. This year she lost her partner, her friend, and it's hard to go on alone. Please remind her that she is not, that she is surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses and good friends. Light a candle for the Neitzels as they remember their daughter and, and their grandchildren, that they can trust that indeed she no longer suffers and sings with the angels. Light a candle for Clint, that through the struggles of his family and as he discovers a new way of being in this world, that God continues to strengthen him. I light a candle for Scott. He's had some health issues, and we're glad that he's got the help and healing that he needs, and we continue to pray that you lay your healing hand on him. I light a candle for Sue Toyota. The years have seen her with a lot of pain and, and struggles, and we ask that you take that pain away. Give her strength to face a new day. And for her family to discover joy and happiness. Light a candle for Chris, who, whose husband is struggling with his own health at this time, and it's hard to be a caregiver for caregivers. And I pray that this crisis will pass. Light a candle for Sandy Saland, who will be having surgery soon on a tumor. We pray that the doctors, the nurses, all the aides and all those who will be there, that you would guide their hands to bring her to good health and to heal her. And for her husband and children and grandchildren that they have strength for the future ahead. I light a candle for Judy, who too is discovering a new way to be in her, in her relationships as they struggle with what's to come. May she know that she's also surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. I light a candle for Marcus and his family, that they continue to know God's love for them as they journey in this life. And I light a candle for Michelle. Let her know that God is indeed with her and that he give her strength 
and courage. And for Diane, may she also know the peace that passes all understanding, that she gains strength and courage. And for Ho, that she continue to discover ways to heal and to be strengthened for this journey. And for my wife, may she know God's love for her as she mourns the loss still of so many. But we are indeed surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses who love us who knew wish to journey with us. We offer up these prayers, Lord, trusting in your mercy, that indeed you love us and you desire health and healing in all our lives. We pray this in the Christ child's name, Jesus Emmanuel, Prince of Peace, the light that shines in the darkness. Amen. Thank you.
May God bless you and keep you. May God's holy darkness enfold you and grant you rest. May God nourish a seed of hope among us. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you this night and always. Thanks be to God.